And so hello, welcome back to our part two of Buoyant Simple Foam. Again, we we investigate the most simple of uh, the simple foam cases, Buoyant Simple Foam, and this is the Buoyant Cavity. So let's take a look at the results. Um, all right, first we look at the log. And we, we take a look at how it's run. So to execute the file, you just type buoyant simple foam as you have seen here. So if you don't want to use the all run file, you just type in buoyant simple foam. Um, so it does a simple algorithm. It will read all the inputs, including the thermodynamics and all. And this is how all the um, uh, turbul excuse me, turbulent uh, properties. And you can see how long it actually takes when it iterates. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, if not, it's going to be very long. But it's a thousand time steps, okay? One thousand time steps. So, yeah, nothing nothing too much there. Thing is, we want to open ParaView. So let's uh, touch, touch, uh, boy, and cavity, foam. And let's open ParaView. And take a look at what's going on. So Paraview is going to take a while to load, okay. Of course, in the meantime, we can can take a look. We, yeah, I'm thinking of you know, we we talked about uh, constant uh, temperature conditions, right? Um, that's the boundary conditions. So next thing we will of course want to know after this is how to do a heat flux boundary condition. We saw the adiabatic one already. We want to look, take a look at heat flux also. That's of interest to us. But that's for next time. Let's take a look at uh, this first. So let's go up. Uh, so this is where my Linux file is. I'll go to open form. And I'll just drop into my tutorials. And this is the copy of the entire tutorials directory. Okay, so let's go boy in simple form and boy in cavity. There we go. Okay, so let's apply. It's going to take a while to load. Ah, alright, so let's see. Uh, this is the pressure, which is kind of expected. Okay, so I'm going to rescale. Alright. Um, okay. Yeah, so you can see a, a very gradual uh, change in pressure. Okay. Ooh. Here's the Z directory. Uh, Z. Okay, so there's a there's a pressure gradient from uh, top to bottom, right? Okay, so um, this is quite natural, especially the bottom part should have more pressure than the top. Okay, but let's take a look at where the hot and cold wall is also. So you can take a look at T. So you can see that, uh, yeah, take a look at this one. There was one side that's blue here, one side that is red. So the blue side is about 290 something Kelvin. The red part, it's about 300 and something Kelvin. So the temperature difference is rather small. You can see there's some kind of a thermal boundary layer, right? Especially this part. You can see one small little uh, thermal boundary layer. It's kind of a crooked now, but uh, you can see the the boundary layer thickening as you would expect in a uh, this this kind of a flow regime. Now let's uh, let's get it back to normal before it gets too giddy. Uh, so. Um, Next thing we want to know is probably the U velocity. This is very important. Okay, so um, as you can see, the magnitude uh, here, it kind of speeds up towards the top. There's a lot of velocity magnitude because it's circulating. Then it comes down. So if you want to see the uh, Z velocity, oh, right. UY, yeah. So what's UY like? You see, there's a negative velocity on the right-hand side, which means that the fluid is falling down. 
and there's a positive velocity on the left hand side which means the fluid's going up because the wall is hot now, of course at the wall itself it's almost zero because it's a no slip that's a uh, kind of a no-brainer but uh, yeah you can see you can see what's going on here there's convection going on right so that is that is what the uh, buoyancy perform case is like all right so uh, if you if you want to look at uh, oops if you want to look at you know how the boundary conditions are written you can always look here so these these are for area bets because they are zero gradient but uh, for hot and cold we have a uh, constant temperature but uh, how then how then are uh, heat flux conditions written yeah, because uh, in uh, our study of heat transfer we will always want to look at how do we do heat flux boundary conditions so um, yeah so yeah in the next video we'll probably want to look at how heat flux uh, conditions are written and yeah uh, we'll continue on from there into seeing how these uh, heat transfer files are written for boy in simple form so this is the most simple case because it's steady state after that we want to move to non-steady state situations uh, we can look at heat flux uh, we can look at other sorts of boundary conditions uh, then maybe we want to start making our own case okay so this is how we, we study we, we look through the each of the tutorials we, we kind of learn and glean from how they are written try and understand where they're coming from then we start to make our own uh, farm so that's how we, we can do this learning process okay so thanks for watching uh, I know this video is very short and content is uh, pretty minimal but uh, yeah thanks for watching uh, for our patience anyway I'll see you guys next time bye bye